Whether you're a new or existing Synology NAS user, there are things that you can purchase that will either increase the reliability of the device, the stability, or potentially even the performance. The issue is it's kind of hard to navigate when you're new. So in this video, I want to talk through those options so that you can kind of understand exactly what they bring to your NAS and if you do or do not need them. So the first one we're gonna talk about is going to be the one that just about every single user needs, and that's a UPS device. So for the most part, you can buy whatever device that you want, with the exception being that you should buy a device that has a USB data connection. What this will allow you to do is ultimately monitor the UPS. So if the UPS goes on battery power, it will automatically shut down your NAS after a specified period of time. Why that's important is because if a sudden power outage occurs when a write operation is occurring, you can potentially corrupt your storage pool. So this is something that I think every single user needs for their NAS. Now there are different types of UPS devices and this is where things can get a little messy. So the most important factor is having one. If you get past that, the second most important thing to look at is something called pure sine wave. So pure sine wave UPS devices ultimately just mean it's the cleanest overall form of power for your device. Generally, you'll be picking between pure sine wave and simulated sine wave. Pure sine wave comes at a premium. It's gonna be more expensive. But if you care about the actual power delivery to the unit, a pure sine wave device will be best. Next. The overall size is gonna be dependent on exactly what you're gonna be plugging into that UPS device. So if you are only plugging in your Synology NAS, you can go with something like a 600 VA that APC makes. The downside of that device is it's not pure sine wave. So everything kind of comes with its positives and its negatives. So if you want a pure sine wave device, the ones that I've always purchased are cyber power UPS devices. At the time when I bought it, I wanna say it was like $200, somewhere around that range. So you're paying a premium for that type of device, but you're also getting the size with it. So you'd be able to plug in things like your router, your switches potentially. So you don't only have to limit it to your NAS, but overall, the main point is get a UPS. And then from that point forward, you could generally decide which will be best. I have an article on which I think are best. I'll leave a link for that in the description, but overall just have one. Next up will be an external hard drive. So when you're new, a lot of people end up thinking that RAID is a backup. Unfortunately, RAID is not a backup. Yes, you might set up something like RAID 1, and in your mind, you have a mirrored copy of your data, and that would be true. The downside is that that storage pool can corrupt, and if something happens to the actual NAS or the storage pool, that actual copy that you think you have, you don't actually have. So taking a backup is of the utmost importance. Now, the types of backups that you can use is where there's a lot of debate. This is the way that I look at it. Overall, you need to make sure you have some sort of a backup. An external hard drive will give you that type of backup. So is it the best form of backup? No, why is it not the best? It's not the best because there are people out there that believe that not only should your NAS have RAID, but your actual backup device should have RAID as well so that you can use things like BTRFS, and potentially use data scrubbing, et cetera. The downside of that is that to actually purchase a NAS and then purchase a secondary NAS as either a local or an offsite backup, it gets expensive. And overall, you generally want a local and an offsite backup if possible. So to summarize all of that, if you have nothing and you just need a backup, you should start with an external hard drive. Western Digital makes easy store devices and elements devices. And overall, they're just white label, Western Digital red NAS hard drives that are just basically in an external enclosure. You would plug that into your NAS, you'd use something like Hyper Backup, and then you'd be able to back up the data from your NAS to that external hard drive, and then you'd have a local backup. Now you should look into an offsite backup, either in the cloud, or like I said, a NAS device somewhere offsite. But overall, this is the very first thing that you should look into. And if you don't have a local backup, an external hard drive is a great place to start. Next would be upgraded networking. So networking is kind of tough because it really depends on the type of device that you're using. So using something like a Synology DS923 Plus, for example, you can buy an adapter that basically allows you to use 10 gig, five gig, and two and a half gig networking for that specific NAS. Now. An individual hard drive will not saturate a 10 gigabit connection. 
So four hard drives will not saturate a 10 gigabit connection. So if you are only using a DS923 Plus and you have four hard drives in it, you will never saturate a 10 gig connection. That doesn't mean you shouldn't buy this. It just means that in your head, you have to be aware that when you actually configure that device, you won't ever be maximizing it. So going the actual standard Synology route, that's the best route because it is a supported device that you're using. Downside is that it's expensive. Now there are like little USB two and a half and five gigabit adapters that you can use and plug into a NAS. The problem is as soon as you plug it into that device, it will not be recognized. So you have to go out of your way to kind of install additional packages and they're unsupported packages. And when I say unsupported, I mean unsupported from Synology. So you could run into problems either when you install it, you could run into physical issues with your NAS where you install it and it screws something up. Unlikely, but it's definitely possible. And then you can run into future problems where it works today, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna to work tomorrow. The benefit to that is they're super cheap. They're like 20 or $30, and you can increase the networking speeds to and from your Synology NAS if you're willing to go that route. Now, Robbie over at NAS Compares did a video on, I believe it was a five gigabit adapter. I'll leave a link to that in the description, but he walks through the whole process on kind of why you'd wanna do this, why you should take backups before you do it, and then how you can actually go through and configure. So again, that's a great video. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Next would be SSD cache. So we just talked about networking speeds and how something like four hard drives in a Synology DS923 Plus would not fully saturate a 10 gigabit connection. But let's say you did want to saturate that connection. You can use something called SSD cache. Ultimately, certain Synology models have NVMe slots in them and you can configure it either in a read-only or a read-write cache. Now they're very different and I'll quickly talk through them. But the idea is that you're using the speed of that additional device with your storage pool to increase the overall performance of the data on your NAS. Now there are two very different types. There's read only and read write. Read only will allow you to utilize RAID 1, which is a mirror or RAID 0, which is basically both drives being used together to have the maximal overall performance. You can only do that with read only cache because generally, you can't really mess anything up with read-only cache. With read-write cache, you can actually corrupt your storage pool. So what happens is if for whatever reason, one of those drives die as it's in the middle of a write operation, your storage pool can corrupt. I've had clients reach out to me where the actual cache somehow got unmounted from the storage pool. And at that point, they kind of had to go to Synology who then ran some script on their NAS to actually remount it. The point is, this is adding a layer of complexity to your NAS. It's also adding performance to your NAS. So back to the 10 gigabit speeds, this would technically allow you to fully saturate a 10 gigabit connection on a DS923 Plus where you only have four hard drives. Using read-only would allow you to saturate it from a read perspective and using read-write would allow you to saturate it from a read and write perspective. To add even more complexity to it, you can actually use those NVMe drives as volumes. So if you wanted to on newer Synology devices, you can use that NVMe drive as a volume. So the point is, if you buy an NVMe drive for your NAS device or drives for your NAS device, you can use either read-only cache, read-write cache, or just a regular old storage pool. All of them will give you better performance. It's just a matter of what makes the most sense. And ultimately that is determined by your requirements. So whatever requirements you individually have, whatever networking you have, et cetera, that will ultimately determine what option is best. But overall, you can buy NVMe drives on certain Synology models, generally they're plus models, but you can buy NVMe drives, add them to your NAS and increase the overall performance of it. Next up will be memory. So memory is a, it's a tough one. I'm gonna give you a really basic example. And in my head, this is how I think of memory. I think of memory like a gas tank. If you're running empty, you need to go get gas. If you're not running empty, getting more gas isn't necessarily gonna allow you to get to your destination if your destination is close by. So adding memory, if you're basically using your NAS as is and it's doing everything that you need and you're staying under, let's say, 50, 60% usage, adding memory, you might see certain benefits, but you're probably not gonna see a benefit from a greater level. Now, let's say your NAS device 
is running at like 80% memory. Adding more memory to it will greatly, greatly improve the overall performance of it. So I like to give that disclaimer because certain people just go and they just upgrade the memory whenever they purchase the device and they're happy with that. Certain people never update it and never even notice it. For most devices, I wanna to say today, most Synology devices probably come somewhere around four gigabytes for their plus model. Depending on what you're doing, that four gigabytes might be fine. Depending on what you're doing, you might be able to add that to eight gigabytes. So I have in my DS923 Plus, I have eight gigabytes in it and I upgraded it from four gigabytes to eight gigabytes. Now, again, there's different types of memory. There's official supported memory from Synology that they make that you can use, which will perform no differently than the unbranded regular memory that you can buy on Amazon. There are unsupported lists, I believe, online that you can check, which will basically tell you like someone went out and purchased this memory kit and they can confirm that it works properly. But overall, the first question is, do your requirements require additional memory? The second question is, does your NAS even support the additional memory? And the third question is, which memory are you gonna buy? So overall, the point is certain Synology models allow you to upgrade the memory, and in certain cases, upgrading the memory can be a tremendous improvement to the overall performance of the device. Now, overall, there are probably other things that you can buy for your Synology NAS device, and if you have any, I'd love to hear them in the comments. But overall, I think that these five are the main items that you would potentially buy that can improve the performance, reliability, or stability of your Synology NAS, and more importantly, see the actual benefit in some capacity when you actually go to use this stuff. So I have links for everything in the description, but realistically, you could just go look it up, find exactly what you wanna do, and purchase it. But overall, I hope this video helped out. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.